Hello everyone and welcome back. So I'm going to continue the same session that we had off parallel process last time and continue on with some of the things that we may encounter when we are using parallel process. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to use the same class that we used before. Uh, if you're not aware of this class, please refer to the previous video in which we are just um, giving a brief sort of process of what parallel process does. OK, getting on. So if you remember what we had done was just um, selected three rows of data and then we are going to loop at them and then create our separate parallel sessions for each of them. Now, one of the requirements we get for parallel processing is that sometimes there is data in, let's say, the first order or one of the orders. In this case, we have three orders. So let's say there is data in the first order that we want to use in the second and third. So now we could have created or we could have generated the same data in the second and the third order, but just for the sake of redundancy, we do not want to do that and we want to make something reusable from the first order itself. Let's say we are creating some business partner in our first uh, order and we want to use the same business partner for all of them. So in real case scenario, you're not going to get three rows here. You're going to get like 100 rows here maybe. So you don't want to create the business partner 100 times. So what you will do is just you want to create the business partner only in the first go and use that business partner in your subsequent uh, sessions or subsequent orders or whatever it is that you are planning to do. So um, just a very simple way of doing that is uh, let's we want to do that creation of business partner inside the uh, function module of parallel processing. So we go inside. And in our case, what we had done was just, you know, reading a simple uh, order read and that's it. We are not doing anything else. So here, depending upon whatever requirements is, uh, you want to create a business partner, you want to get further document flow or, you know, whatever. What I'm going to do is, um, let's say there is some data inside this. Uh, let's go inside. Let's say I want to uh, take this process type and I want this process type of the first one only and I want to use that process type into my subsequent orders. So one of the ways to do that. Mm, I tried a lot of methods and the only method that worked for me is what we are going to discuss here. Please feel free to let me know if there are any other methods that work for you. Uh, so yeah, what I will do is I'll take this. Um, and I know for a fact now that I only have one record, so you will do whatever you have. Uh, so I'm going to take this process type and. So I'm going to use this process type now. Assume I'm in my first session, OK? So what I'm going to do is just take this process type and export it. Export. Process type equal to LV process type. To map, oh sorry. To memory ID. Uh, ABC just now for testing purposes only. So what I've done is in my first session, I've come in, I've gotten the process type and I've exported it to this memory ID. So ideally now the process type that whatever I have in my first session should also be available to me in my second and third sessions and subsequent. Uh, so how do we avoid this one? So before doing this, what we will do is we will just do an import. Use the same thing. So we do an import from so this memory ID should be the same as the previous memory ID. Now again, there is do not use hard coded values like these because in production when you're running parallel sessions, it's going to uh, create a lot of other sessions as well. So let's say you're creating one uh, like the calling class from 10 different places. You don't want all of them to have this. So please make this dynamic, something unique to your uh, session only. And so now because I'm importing it here, it will give me a syntax error, so I'll just. 
do this. Uh, what's the process type? Okay, so now this can be like this. So that means what you have done is uh, you've imported process type from this memory ID. If this is initial, then you go ahead and read it. And if the printer. So what this means is when you come in your first session, you're going to do import it from this memory ID. If this was your first session, nothing will be imported because nothing was exported in the first place. So this will be initial and it will go into this if condition. And then you read the value from whatever you know your um, data is, and then you export it to this memory parameter. So the next time you come in here, you will get the value. You are going to import it. And then again, you're going to then in the second case, you're not going to get this. Uh, let's test it. So we'll test it from the calling class itself and what I'm going to do is I already have a breakpoint here just setting it again and then I'm going to also set this one here so going to process uh, so it's called my first function module in fact you know what let me just execute this method so now you see here we have three sessions because we selected three rows. So now we have three sessions. So let's go to the first one. So first one, we are doing an import. Uh, import fields as a Bersi was four. Our process type is blank. So what we did was we read our data. And now we are passing, exporting it to that memory ID. So in the first session, we have passed our ZNIR to the memory ID. And now we have come to the second session. So in the second session, what we will do is we are going to import that. But the catch here is, you see, even though you imported it, it was still blank in the first instance here. So we have again gone into the export chain. So in the second section, uh, second session, we were not able to read it. In the third session, again, the same thing. We imported it, the import failed. So we ended up exporting it. So then, the memory ID did not serve any purpose for us. Now, why was this? This was because the memory ID parameter is available to us in the same session only. In parallel process, we end up creating multiple sessions, and so the value doesn't get available to us. So in order for the value to be available to us, there is another syntax that we can use. So that is using the shared buffer ID shared buffer id okay it's not the shared buffer id it's the shared buffer index and so you are importing it and then the same And the same here to uh, export is this to shared buffer index. Syntax check, correct. So we have moved, changed the syntax from memory ID to shared buffer. Now let's see how it works. So it's already activated. Mm, I'll execute the whole thing. So now again, we have three different sessions running. So let's go into the first one. Obviously, the first one will not be there. So we have again exported it to that 
a buffer ID and then we uh, execute it. I accidentally pressed F8 on the second one, but no worries. We'll go to the third session. So in the third session, now we're going to try the if the import works. So this is our LV process type and yes, it did. So now we were able to import it from that buffer ID. So then the export will fail. So the second session, the third, yeah, the second session was just uh, run directly. So we are not able to see it, but the third, we can see it in the third one. So that means the memory ID does not work, but the shared buffer ID does. Now, the reason is because, uh, like I said, memory ID works only on one session, but when in parallel sessions, because we generate multiple sessions, um, we need to use the shared buffer index in that case. So I hope uh, you understand which one to use when. And now going on to the third problem, what you might face in parallel processing is sometimes uh, in this case, in my case, this is I'm on my dev environment and in the dev environment, you generally have only one application instance running, but in your test environment or in your production environment, there's more than likely chance of having multiple application servers. So when you have multiple application servers, the system uh, deploys these parallel sessions on any available server. So whichever server has a free work process, it's going to deploy there. So the problem with that is, in that case, your shared buffer ID will not work. Your memory ID doesn't work anyway. And now your shared buffer ID will also not work. Mm, so to do that, this is the trick. So right now what we're doing is we are deploying all of them into a group, a parallel generator. The problem will still persist because in production and in test, there are going to be more than one application server and the distribution will be as per the work processes. So to handle this, what we can do is use make use of a function module. Called as th server list. So what this function module does is, is you just run it and it gives you a list of the available servers on your system. So this is the this is the structure that you will get after you run the function module, and your, the name of your application server you will get it in in you know all these fields. So the method that we applied in our project was just to see which host we are currently on. So this host and this name, this will give you the application server instance name and the host server. So what we did was we used that function module th server list and we got the list of all the application servers. Then we read, you know, the system ID SYST host name. We saw which application server and which host was the calling program deployed on. And then we took that calling program and passed it inside this loop and passed it explicitly here instead of parallel generators. So what that did was it ensured that all of these parallel tasks, they were all deployed to the same application server. And because it's deployed to the same application server, that means it was going to be able to access the shared buffer of that application server. And so you will always get the value in every of your session. If you don't use it, it is going to deploy it to any work process that is available and then uh, process. So that will solve your problem of shared buffer as well. Uh, so that is it in this topic for today. We saw how we can, what we can use. Can we use memory ID? No, we cannot. Can we use shared buffer ID? Yes, we can, provided it's on the same application instance. And if it is not on the same application instance, what we will do is we will uh, get the server list and pass that uh, application instance from that server list in here. So I hope you guys find this video useful. Please like, comment, and let me know what you guys would like to see next. Thank you.